Welcome. In this video, we're going to show how to replace C8 capacitor on the LX200 Classics motherboard. Now this PCB has static sensitive parts on it, so we're going to take precautions. We're going to use an anti-static wrist strap, which will ground our body, and an anti-static mat, which is grounded to earth ground. That way we can't impart a spark that would damage one of the chips. You can find C8 in the lower left hand corner of the board with the edge connector pointing down. Now the board that we have has a short circuit. The most common cause of the short circuit is the original Mead tantalum capacitor shorting. And when that does, it often burns up and it's easily visible. In this case, we don't see any damage on our C8. It could still be shorted. And we're going to go ahead and make a quick rough measurement of resistance across the power terminals just to get an idea of whether that is a zero ohm measurement that would lead us to believe that there's a hard short like a shorted capacitor or a crossed wire or if it's a little bit higher resistance that would lead us to believe that it's maybe one of the active components on the board that has failed instead of C8. And we got 23 ohms and so that's what we're going to suspect. This capacitor, even if it hasn't failed yet, will fail in the future. Plus, this is a video about replacing C8, so we're going to replace C8. To set up for the soldering job, we're going to need, of course, a soldering iron with some solder and a tip cleaner, flush cut snippers, tweezers, our anti-static wrist guard, heat proof mat, and of course the replacement capacitor, which in this case is a 6.8 microfarad electrolytic 50 volt rated capacitor. Now we're ready to snip the old capacitor off. And when we do this, we'd like to leave a little bit of a lead left over so we can grab it with the tweezers when it's time to pull the lead out. The positive lead and the negative lead are both connected to power buses on this PC board. And those power buses are wide and they can sink a lot of heat. This is going to slow us down a bit because the soldering iron is going to have to spend some time on those leads before it can melt the solder. There's one. One more to go. To get these leads out, we're going to have to actually add some solder. And this seems counterintuitive, but what we're really doing here is adding some thermal mass closer to the lead so that when our soldering iron is applied to it, it'll collect more heat closer to where we want the solder to melt. We've been able to push the lead through a little bit and hopefully that will leave enough showing on the top of the PC board that we can grab onto them with the tweezers. At this point, I realized that I cut the capacitor off too close to the PC board and I should have left a little bit longer lead on each end. That would have made this part a lot easier and saved us some time. Okay, leads are out. Now that we've removed the leads, let's test to make sure we can 
Insert the capacitor's leads in the holes that are left behind. Well, it looks like there's just too much solder left in those holes for us to be able to insert the new capacitor's leads. So we'll get it out with a solder sucker. The trick to using the solder sucker successfully is to heat up the solder until it's melted, and then push the solder sucker's silicon tubing right on top of it. It's capable of handling the heat without melting, it makes a nice seal, and it will take the solder right out of there. Now all that's left to do is put in the new capacitor. We're going to pay attention to the plus sign on the PCB which tells us which hole has the positive lead and that's the longer lead coming from this electrolytic capacitor. The shorter lead is the negative lead and there's a stripe on the case showing the negative lead as well. So it's two ways to tell. We put it in and then we bend it at a right angle because this has a cover plate on top of it and there's not a lot of height to play with. So we're going to bend it over, but make sure that the leads are correctly bent so that they don't touch each other. And then on the back, we're going to bend the leads flat to hold the capacitor in place while we solder it. Cut the leads flush and we should be good to go. Let's do a final inspection to inspect our work. Everything looks nice, so we're done. If you have any questions about the video or suggestions for improvement, please let us know in the comments. Thank you.